Hello my darlings and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Miranda and I am the Enchantress of Avalon. So this is a bit of a bonus episode as I've decided I'm going to be doing extra episodes for the month of October because why shouldn't I do extra episodes for the spookiest month of the year? But beyond being the month of October, as I'm now a full-time small business owner, I thought that I could possibly have a little more ability to record videos given that I work from home. So that's what we're doing here today. And the topic of today's video is Melusine, the mermaid goddess of Avalon. And I have done a whole video on Melusine a long time ago. And I know I've mentioned her in several other videos because she's very important to me, but I did want to give her her own video again today. And I'll probably do more videos of her in the near future, but there's a very good reason. You see, about a week and a half ago, I got very inspired that I should begin preparing to do my first ever online class. That is developing my first ever online class to teach others. <laughs> I've taken plenty of online classes over the years, but I so badly wanted to be able to create my own. But originally I thought this would be something that would be years and years down the line. But I got this spark of inspiration and this very like firm push that now is the time to begin developing it. So I have, and I posted some polls on Patreon, which the link to my Patreon is always in the description box below. And also here on my YouTube community page. First, I posted the Saturday before last and just trying to gauge interest if anyone wants to take an online class from me at all. And then this past Saturday, so just two days ago, I posted another poll announcing that my class would in fact be about Melusine. So I wanted to gauge interest in people taking a, that people had in taking a class from me about Melusine. And obviously you could still vote on either of those polls. The my Patreon is always linked right in the description box below here, along with my Discord server, which is totally free to join if you want to join Discord, and my uh, link to my shop, because of course I run the White Rose of Avalon online shop as well, which is my business. <clears throat> and then I, of course, also have that posted on my YouTube community page. So if you go to the community tab, you will have to scroll down a bit, but you'll see the poll if you wanted to take the poll here on YouTube. Now, as I was saying, I announced that I was doing this class on Melusine and I'm just so excited to be preparing this class for her and about her. I am still in the very early stages. Obviously, like I said, it's only been about a week and a half that I've begun preparing this. But I've gotten a lot done already because I just went down the rabbit hole and I started outlining and writing and preparing how I would be presenting this class. So it's a very exciting time for me, needless to say. Now, before I get into most, a bit of Melusine's story and what I wanted to discuss in this video, I do want to just give that reminder about my online shop. I of course did just mention it, but my online shop is always linked in the description box below. It is whiteroseavalon.life and it is the online shop on my website. And I sell herbal teas and I also do tarot readings. So you could order any of those from me just by clicking down there and taking a peek. And of course this course, once it is fully developed and launched, will be part of my business. So all very, very exciting. And now let's get into Melusine. So Melusine is a fairy queen and water goddess, a mermaid goddess, 
who has deep ties to Avalon. And as the Enchantress of Avalon, of course, I feel very, very pulled towards her. And she is also this folkloric figure whose tales were spread throughout France and Germany in the medieval period. So that connection also to Avalon is in the fact that France and Germany are the main sources we have for the spread of her tale because both France and Germany are lands that are tied to the Arthurian legends and if you go back farther to Celtic belief. So we can see that Melusine's legends probably did develop in conjunction with the Arthurian legends in some way. She was developing in this in similar regions and her story is spread this way. And in many tellings of her legends, Melusine was actually raised in Avalon by her mother. Her mother was a fairy, a water fairy named Pracine, and she had three daughters with her husband, but he broke the promise he made to her upon their marriage, so she left him and took their daughters to Avalon. And the eldest of the three is Melusine. Melusine decides she wants to get revenge on her father, who is a Scottish king or noble, depending on the tale, the telling of the tale. And she and her sisters all get punished because she had convinced her sisters to help her take revenge on their father when she found out why their mother had left him. And this is what causes Pristine, their mother, to get very angry at the girls and she punishes each of them. The punishment that matters for the Melusine tale is Melusine's own punishment and that is she has to spend every Saturday in her mermaid form. And her mermaid form does differ depending on which version of the legend you read. Sometimes she has a traditional mermaid tale. Sometimes she has a twin tale, two tails. And sometimes she has a serpent tail. And there is that serpentine energy tied in with the mermaid energy and with Melusine's tail, no matter what. And actually, if you see a lot of the medieval drawings and artworks depicting Melusine, that you'll see a lot of the traditional like serpent tail look to her. And then eventually transitioning into the newer depictions of her, you see more depictions with the mermaid tail and with the twin tails. Although there's a good number of twin tail depictions that are attributed to being Melusine, but it's a little iffy if they're actually supposed to have been her back in the medieval period. So do with that what you will. But I do want to note here that the reason why I specifically noted the twin tails is that that mermaid we see on the Starbucks cup all the time, that is Melusine. That is supposed to be a depiction of Melusine. So I always find that really fascinating. But when you look at Melusine in popular culture, there's a lot of little references to her if you know what to look for. And I'll actually be going over that as part of the course during different lessons. I'll be touching upon different aspects of Melusine that appear throughout popular culture. It's very, very fun. Anyway, Melusine has this curse placed upon her and she's 15 because she was 15 when she found out about what happens with her father and tried to take revenge on him. So that is when she becomes a lady of the fountain or a well maiden. She is tending this fountain out in the forest. And at one point when she is doing this, a young nobleman, newly a count actually, finds her font and he is in really dire emotional state at that point because there had been an accident that he technically caused in most times he technically caused the accident and the previous count had been killed 
and he was the heir apparent. So he's now become this count and he feels so much guilt and he's trying to process all of this pain and Melusine helps him both through being a shoulder to cry on and also through giving him advice, very important advice that helps him secure his title and secure a vast amount of lands for himself. So once all of this happens, he ends up proposing to Melusine and she happily, agree she happily agrees to be his wife, but with a special caveat. She asks him one thing. I will be your wife, but I need complete and utter privacy on Saturdays. You can never see me on a Saturday. He finds this strange, but he is in love with her, so he agrees. And the marriage goes on pretty happily from then on for many years. She bears him many sons. She builds a bunch of castles and expands his lands. She's often called the Builder Fairy, in fact, because she does so much to construct these castles and these fortresses and to really make his land a better place to live and a more profitable and fruitful place, tying into her associations with prosperity and fertility and abundance as a water fairy. She has those associations to begin with, but she expands upon that because not only is she bearing him actual children, but she's making his lands a better place to live in. So again, they're very happy for a long time, but as is always the case in these tales of fairy women and human men, there comes a point when either Raymond's old curiosity gets to him or when someone gets in his ear. And so Raymond, the count married to this very magical fairy woman, decides that he needs to know what she does on Saturdays. So he follows her and he spies on her one day and sees that on Saturdays, she spends her day in this beautiful, lavish, huge tub of water in her mermaid form. So he knows the truth. From there, the tale goes one of two ways. Either Raymond immediately confronts Melusine about the fact that she hid her mermaid nature from him, or a second, he doesn't confront her immediately. He keeps it to himself for a while. And only after one of their sons has done something horrible. Usually it's destroying a monastery or a church of some sort in most tellings. It is that once he has done this destruction, he is notably one of their children that looks very beautiful as most of their children have deformities of some sort leading to this mother of monsters reputation she does have. But this child is a very beautiful son, but he does something horrific. And Raymond is so distraught that he turns on Melusine and calls her a monster and says that the reason their sons are so monstrous is that she is a monster. So Melusine knows the truth, knows now that he has betrayed her trust and the one thing she ever asked of him, which was for privacy on Saturdays. So she turns into a dragon and flies away to return to Avalon, her true home. She never sees Raymond again. He no longer has the blessing of the land, the blessing of this fairy queen of sovereignty bestowing upon him all these blessings. He doesn't have that anymore, but he does retain his title. Melusine, though she never sees him again, is still a mother so she still does come to visit her children and she teaches them things secret fairy things however sadly her children because they had a mortal father 
and were not raised in a fairyland like Nalacine herself was, they're human for the most part. They have fairy blood, but they're humans. So they live human lives and they die human deaths. And this is when we get into Melusine in her banshee aspects. I also call it the ancestress aspect. Melusine cries and wails at the death of each of her children and continues on throughout her line. It's said that descendants of Melusine still do hear her cries before they die and that other descendants will hear it when one of their own is about to die. Because she has become a sort of like this banshee figure for her own bloodline. And she's still very active with those descended from her to this day. There is so much in Melusine's story to dig into, which is why the course I'm developing on her will be seven months long because I want to dig into different aspects of her story, deep dive into those, and also dig into how they relate to each of the seven aspects of Melusine because the way I work with her and the way I feel her, I feel she has seven distinct aspects. So that is the course I'm developing. Now, it won't start for several months, but I did want to talk a bit about it. And I do hope you've enjoyed learning about the mermaid goddess Melusine. And please, if you did like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all very soon. Bye now.